Hi and welcome to another math lesson. Uh, today we're looking at functions and graphs, a topic that's actually quite difficult, or students find it difficult, but I hope we can simplify it. Okay, let's first just look at functions. Functions, what is a function? First of all, a function is a rule, or maybe a question, that assigns one value from a group to exactly one other value in another group. So this might sound quite weird. A function is a rule or a question that assigns one value of a group to exactly one value in another group. Now in maths we just don't talk about groups, we talk about sets. So instead of talking about group, so we're going to talk about sets. Now sets is just a collection of numbers, um, but we'll get to that just now. Let me first of all just show you a basic example of of what can be a question that assigns one value to another value and um, we're not going to look at values but let's look at the following example in this example we have two groups we have a group of babies and we have a group of men and we want to connect the baby with his dad so the question is or the rule is who's your daddy and with that rule we can now assign we go to a baby okay assuming the baby can speak we ask the baby who's your daddy and he might say well that guy's my dad okay and we ask another baby who's your daddy he says that guy's my dad okay how about you he says now that guy is my dad this guy says oh I've got the same dad as this dude okay is that possible can two babies have the same father of course, they can be twins, brothers and sisters, or, or whatever. We can have the same baby have, uh, sorry, the same dad have more than one baby, okay? But is it possible that this baby can say, that's my daddy, and that's my daddy? We're obviously talking about biological parents. No, that's not possible. We have that every, that the rule is that every element in one of the groups or every value in one group gets associated with only one or exactly one value in another group can there be any baby without a dad well not if these are all human babies and and in this group all of them are human dads can there be men with no babies in other words, after I've assigned all of the babies, might it be possible that some men don't have babies? Of course, some men don't have babies. So it's not the fact that, that, that it's a fact that every baby will be assigned to a dad, but it's not a fact that every man will have a baby. Okay, but is it possible that all of the babies will have a dad in this group? Must every baby have a, have, a, have a man associated from him in this group? Well, I didn't say the babies are only human babies. We might have dog babies, but I did say it's men. Okay, so I might have a little doggy there. And he's asking, who's my daddy? He's not going to find his daddy in this group. Okay, because this is a group of men. Babies might consist of um, more than just human babies it might be doggy babies or fish babies or whatever and it doesn't have so in other words asking that question to this dog is ridiculous I can't ask the dog probably because he can't answer but more than that is I can't ask the dog the question who's your daddy and he can choose out of this group because it his his dad is not in that group okay so in other words he falls outside of the scope so I, I may not ask him the question. I may not. It is, it's an illogical question. It's a silly question. Okay. I cannot find a baby to match this da dad. It's impossible to find a baby to match this dad if he doesn't have a baby. I cannot do that. Now that's maybe just a very oversimplification of what functions are. Um, but it really comes down to that. So just to, to give you, um, this is one way of representing a function is in this diagram. Another way is using formulas. In other words, I can write this a little bit different. I'm going to write it like this, okay? We're going to say if b, that's just the rule, is b 
who's your daddy? Okay, I can write it like that. B, who's your daddy? Now, the B is a placeholder for now. So, I can change this question and say, okay, F, let's put Jenna in there. Jenna. And now my question changes. It's not B, who's your daddy. It's Jenna, who's your daddy. And Jenna might say, well, my daddy is Peter. Okay, ask the whole question. And the answer is Peter. Peter is my daddy. Okay, or I might ask a different question. I might ask, oh, I ask the same question, but I ask it to a different person. Let's say I ask Ryan. Ryan, the baby Ryan. Okay, and I ask Ryan, who's your daddy? So instead of B, I write Ryan. Now, this type of notation is another way of just representing a function. And Ryan might answer, well, my dad's name is John. John is my dad. Okay. Or he might also have said Peter. Um, so, for example, him and Jenna would be brother and sister. They have the same dad. Okay. Well, this I'm going to leave here and go on to some mathematical um, problems. For example, like this. In this example, we have the question, what is double your value? So, in example, I ask this question of all of the real numbers that exist. Real numbers are just numbers that really exist in the real world. I ask this question to any real number. So, for example, I can ask this question of the number zero. So, I ask zero, what happens if I double your value? And he says, well, double of nothing is still nothing. Okay, and I can ask this question maybe of the number 1. 1, what happens if I double your value? He says, well, you get the answer 2. Okay, if I ask the question maybe of a number like negative 4. Okay, if I owe someone 4 something, what happens if I owe them double that? It means I still owe them. In other words, it's still negative, but now I owe them 8. So what happens if I double negative 4? I get negative 8. Okay, 102, what happens if I double the number 102? Well, I get the number 204. So, here's an example of how I have a rule. And for every, any number in here, you can think of any number, he will give me one answer and only one answer. Just like a child can say, I only have one dad. Okay, biological. So, one number can be associated with only one other number in this question. For example, there's not another number that if I double it, I get 2. The only number that I can double to get 2 is the number 1. Okay? In this case, it's 1 to 1. So, there's not a number, another number that gives me 2. And if I double 1, I only get 2. I can't get another number. Okay? Now, this could also have been expressed in our notation that we talked about earlier if we said f and let's call this group x this will be group x if I ask the question of x what must I do to x? I must double x so I must say x times 2 or 2 times x and that can be shortly uh, written quickly I mean by just saying 2x so this question when I asked it of 0 I write it like that that this means I am asking zero my question and what it means is I replace zero uh, x with zero and I get the answer two times zero is zero in other words this is the answer and we're going to call it y the answer is going to represent the value y so this can also be considered as the input what goes in and this is the output what goes out okay output that's another way of looking at it this can also be called the domain okay the domain and this can also be called the range um, so let's see if the domain and the range are limited for the domain we can ask is there is there anything that I cannot double 
Is there any value you can think of that you cannot double? No. That means x can be any real number. And for the range, is there any number that I can't get by doubling another number? So you can think of anything if you divide it by 2. So let's think about pi, for example. Is, it pos is there a number that I can double to get pi? Okay, so is there numbers somewhere in here that, that will answer, well, if you double me, I'll get pi? Yes, the number pi over 2. That number will be, oh, I don't have space anymore. Okay, well, sorry for that. Okay, pi over 2. If I double pi over 2, I get pi. And pi over 2 is a real number. In other words, my range can also be any real number. Let's look at another example. This time, let's ask the question, what do we get if we multiply u by yourself? So we're asking the question of x, okay, what do we get if we multiply u by yourself? Now, x can again be any real number. We're asking it of any number. Makes sense. I can't ask that of humans, so ask numbers. What do I get if I multiply u by yourself? If I ask 0 the question, he's going to answer 0. 0 times 0 gives me 0. If I ask 1 the question, 1, what do we get if we multiply you by yourself? He says you get 1. 1 times 1 is 1. Negative 4, what do we get if we multiply you by yourself? Negative 4 times negative 4 will give me positive 16. Okay, he says you'll get positive 16. How about the number 102? What do I get if I multiply you by yourself? Well, you get the number... 10,404. Okay, well, we can ask numbers like we can ask pi. Pi, what do we get if we multiply u by yourself? Well, he says, well, you get pi squared. Okay, and if you go calculate pi squared, it's actually a number. Pi squared, let me use my calculator. Pi squared gives me 9,869604. It goes on um, 9, 8, 6, and it goes on. So it, it is actually a number. I can do that. Okay. Now if I go and write this in my function formula, I ask the question, I ask x the question, and can we ask it of any number? Yes. x can be any real number. And I asked him what happens if I multiply you by yourself, and it's just x times x, x squared. So that's my function formula. And the answer that I get, can I get any answer that I can imagine? So is there any answers that I can't get? And in this case, you should recognize, well, I can never get a negative answer. Any number multiplied by itself will always be, it can be zero, yes, and it can be positive, there's a bunch of positive numbers, but it can never be less than zero. So I see that y must be, can never be less than zero, but it can be greater or equal to zero. Okay. So the group, my range, can only be greater or equal to zero. The values that I can obtain, the range. Well, I think that is it for this uh, example. Let's do one more. This time I'm asked the question, asking the question of x okay x how many times do you divide into 12 and the answer he gives is going to be called answer y and the way I can write this in the function formula is I can say well f x is asking the question how many times do you divide into 12 so 12 divided by x well let's start by 0 how many times does 0 divide into x? Well, if you've got an answer, the universe is just ended because there is no answer. Okay, This thing does not have an answer. I may not divide with 0 ever. Okay, so I, might not, I can ask it of 1. 1, how many times do you divide into 12? And he'll answer you, I go in 12 times. I can ask the question of negative 4. Negative 4 how many times do you divide into 12? Well, it's a negative, a positive, 
divided with a negative number will still give me a negative answer, negative 3 times. I can ask the question of 102. 102, how many times do you divide into 12? And he'll give this funky answer. He'll say it's 0, 0,11176, blah, 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 blah. Goes on for quite a while. At some point, it will start repeating. That's how many times he divides into it. Or we can just simply write the answer as 100 and, uh, sorry, uh, 12 divided by 102 and simplify that fraction. That would also be acceptable. And now how about pi? Will we get an answer if we divide 12 with a pi? Of course we will. Pi is a number. If you use your calculator you'll actually get a number. I don't think you can do it without a calculator um, unless you're some sort of genius. But yes, okay, that we can definitely get an answer. Okay, so in other words our domain. Let's look at our domain. Who can we ask the question of? Oh, we can ask any number. We're allowed to ask any number. But there's one number we're not allowed to ask. Okay? We may not ask zero because it, it, it's x may not be zero. I may not divide with zero. I can't even ask zero the question. Okay? Um, just in case he answers and the world comes to an end. Okay, so we may not ask zero why, uh, what happens if we divide u into 12. A denominator can never be zero. Now, of how about the answers? How about the values? Can I get any possible value? And for now, I'm going to just tell you yes. A fraction, I can get any number using a fraction. So y can be any number except my range can be any number except, but I can never have y equal to zero. Y cannot be zero. A fraction, the output, can never be zero. And we'll look a little bit later at y. I hope you understood that what function is. A function is a rule that assigns one value to exactly one other value. Again, you'll see that none of the values for x gives you two values for y. Okay, I can only get one other value. It is, however, not the case, and if we just go back to the previous question, uh, let me go there. In this question, when I was squaring, I would have gotten 16 if I asked for the question as well. So 4 and negative 4 gave me the same answers. Okay, I can al uh, almost like brother and sister saying we have the same dad. So it's, n it's true that I might have two x values that point to the same y value, but I can never have, uh, according to what a function is, a function can only have one x value point to one y value, never more than one y value. Well, I hope you enjoyed it. I enjoyed teaching it, and good luck as we go to the next topic, and that is just looking at domain and range more practically. Cheers.